Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 15 of the chapter Solutions. In this video and the following few consecutive videos, I am going to tell you about colligative properties. But before I come to colligative properties, let us remember what vaporization or vapor pressure was. You have a liquid in a container. On the surface of the, of the liquid, there is a layer of molecules of that particular liquid. Now some of these molecules have higher energy and as a result of that higher energy, they can escape in the form of vapors. And when they do escape in the form of vapors, they result in the, in the formation of, a, uh, of vapors above the liquid and these vapors start exerting pressure. And at, for that temperature, for that liquid, the vapor pressure is always fixed. Now what happens when you add a solute to this solvent, to this liquid? When you add a solute to this liquid, the molecules of the solute also start occupying some of the surface area of the, uh, of the solution. Now the solvent had all the area available to it to evaporate. But now let us say one fourth of the surface, if this was the surface, then let us say one fourth of the surface is used up by molecules of the solute. Now the molecules of the solvent only three fourth of the surface area is available to the molecules of the solvent. So what will happen as a result of this? The vapors, the vapor pressure will decrease. Why? Because now the molecules do not have the same surface area available to them and since evaporation is a surface phenomena, the molecules from the surface that are coming up automatically are lesser because the surface area is lesser. So the presence of a solute, what did it do? It affected the vapor pressure of the solvent. The presence of a solute affected the vapor pressure of the solvent. It did not matter what the solute was. You can take any solute and whatever solute you put in, that solute is going to occupy some of the surface area and is going to have the same effect. So this is the decrease in vapor pressure was a property that depended only on the number of molecules of the solute and not on the properties or the nature of the solute. Such properties are called colligative properties. So how would you define colligative properties? We would say that the properties that depend on the number of solute particles. They do not depend on what is the nature, what, is, what are the chemical properties. No, it is just based on the fact that those molecules are going to occupy the surface area. So the properties that depend on the number of solute particles irrespective of their nature relative to the total number of particles present in the solution. Which means when you say relative to the total number of particles present in the solution, it means it depends only on the concentration of that particular solute in the solution. So the properties that depend on the number of solute particles irrespective of their nature does not depend on their nature relative to the total number of particles present in the solution are called colligative properties. So they are properties which depend only on the presence of a solute. It doesn't matter what the solute may be. And that, how much, what would be the uh, magnitude of the change in that property would only depend on the concentration of the solute. That is, its presence, its particles in re relative to the total number of particles. It means the concentration of the solute. There are four colligative properties. One that you have already studied when we did Raoult's law. It was the lowering of vapor pressure. And since we are talking of in respect to the entire solution, we will call it the relative lowering of vapor pressure. Then the second property is depression in freezing point of the solvent. So what are the four colligative properties? The relative lowering of vapor pressure of the solvent, the depression in freezing point of the solvent, the third colligative property would be the elevation in the boiling point of the solvent and the last colligative property is osmotic pressure of the solution. Now, we, in the few uh, consecutive videos, we are going to be studying these colligative properties one by one. So let us start with the first colligative property today and that is the relative lowering of vapor pressure. 
Since we've done Raoult's law, we will start from something we already know and then we'll move on to the other uh, properties. We know, according to Raoult's law, if you have a solvent and a solute in a binary solution, and let us say that the solvent is, solvent is 1, then and solute is labeled as 2. So P1, that is the pressure of the one is solvent. So the pressure of the solvent is equal to the mole fraction of the solvent, that is X1, into P1 naught, where P1 naught is the vapor pressure of the solvent when no solute was added to it, or the vapor pressure of the solvent in its pure form. This is what we've already done in the previous videos. If you do not get what I'm telling you, I would encourage you to watch the videos before this. A uh, couple of videos before this and you would understand this. Now, as a result of addition of the solute, the vapor pressure reduces. I just explained it to you why. Because the surface area decreases, available to the solvent molecules decreases, and that affects the vapor pressure. So, the reduction in vapor pressure would be represented by delta. Delta means a change. A change in vapor pressure of the solvent, so delta P1 is the change in vapor pressure, is actually equal to the change, that is the vapor pressure when there was no solute added, that is the vapor pressure of the pure solvent minus vapor pressure of the solvent in solution. So P1 naught minus P1 would be the change in vapor pressure, that is delta P1. And this can be written as P1 naught minus P1 we already know according to Raoult's law is X1, P1 naught. So we substitute this here. So in place of P1, we say P1 naught minus X1, P1 naught. X1, P1 naught. Now rearrange this. You get P1 naught, you take it as common and you get 1 minus X1 here. Right? And we know in a binary solution, if you know the mole fraction of one of the components, you can calculate the mole fraction of the other component automatically becomes one whole minus that fraction. So one minus X1 automatically becomes the mole fraction of the solute that is X2. So delta P1 becomes equal to P1 naught X2, right? Let us say you do not have just one solute, you have more than one solute. Then, as we know, colligative properties do not depend on the nature of the solute. So, they only depend on the number of molecules. So, irrespective of how many solutes you have, the, this X2 would then become the sum of the mole fractions of all the solutes. Even if you did not have a binary solution and you had more than one solute, in that case, X2 would become the sum of the mole fractions of all the solutes present. That is written here. In a solution containing several non-volatile sol solutes, the lowering of vapor pressure depends on the sum of mole fractions of the different solutes. And why is this? Because the nature of the solute, the colligative property or the relative lowering of vapor pressure does not depend on the nature of the solute. It only depends on the number of molecules, the total number of molecules of how many ever components there may be. So when we say lowering of vapor pressure, you've understood that the vapor pressure reduces. When we say relative, it is lowering in relation to what? It is lowering in relation to the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. So what would lowering of vapor pressure is delta P1. And in relation to the pure solvent, what is the vapor pressure of the pure solvent? It is P1 naught. So you can rearrange this equation. That is delta P1 is equal to P1 naught up into X2 can be written as delta P1 upon P1 naught is equal to X2. But what does delta P1 upon P1 naught become? It becomes the relative lowering of vapor pressure. This is lowering of vapor pressure in relation to the pure, the vapor pressure of the pure solvent that was P1 naught. So from this we get relative lowering of vapor pressure can therefore be calculated as delta P1 upon P1 naught would be equal to what is delta P1? Delta P1 is nothing but the difference between the vapor pressures of the pure solvent and that of the solvent in the solution. So P1 naught minus P1 upon P1 naught. And we know that this value is equal to X2 from this equation. Right? 
is equal to x2. Now what is x2? x2 is the mole fraction of component 2 and what is 2? 2 is the solute. So it is the mole fraction of component 2 or we can write this as such that is P1 naught minus P1 that is delta P1 upon P1 naught is equal to we, for the mole fraction we write number of moles of the solute divided by the number of moles of solute plus solvent. So N2 upon N1 plus N2. Now how do you calculate the number of moles of anything? The number of moles is calculated by the formula given mass, whatever is the mass of the substance, divided by the molar mass. That gives you the number of moles. Now, since N2 is the solute, that is the number of moles of the solute in comparison to the solvent, the solvent is in large quantity, so N1 is much, much, much greater than N2, or we say that N2 is far, far, far smaller than N1. Therefore, in the denominator, the presence of N2 is really not important and we can ignore it. Or else our calculations will become difficult. So, since it is minuscule, the presence of the solute molecules are minuscule in comparison to the solvent molecules. Therefore, in the denominator, we can ignore the value of N2. And how do we calculate N2 and N1? As I told you, the number of mole, sorry, the mass upon the molar mass of the component. So what would N2 be? It would be the mass of N2, the given weight to us. Let us say 2 grams of something. So you, that 2 grams would be W1, which is equal to 2 grams, divided by the molar mass of the component. So P1 naught minus P1 upon P1 naught, that is the relative lowering of vapor pressure, becomes equal to N2 upon N1, ignoring N2. And when you put the values, when you put calculate N2 and N1, what do you get? N2 is W2, that is the given mass of the component 2, that is the, sol uh, the solute, upon the molar mass of the solute. And N1 is the, the number of moles of solvent would be equal to the mass of solvent divided by the molar mass of the solvent. So this equation will give you the relative lowering of vapor pressure. So that was our first colligative property. Let us now solve this one uh, solved example of your textbook to understand this. How do we use it? The question is question 2.6. And the question is the vapor pressure of pure benzene at a certain temperature is 0 0.850 bar. A non-volatile, non-electrolytic solid weighing 0 0.5 grams when added to 39 grams of benzene whose molar mass is equal to 78 grams per mole, vapor pressure of the solution is then is 0 0.845 bar. What is the molar mass of the solid substance? Now, we we'll write down what all is given to us and what are we expected to find out and then we'll solve this problem. Give me a moment if we clear the board. All right, let us start solving this. What is given to us? Let us assume that benzene, that is the solvent, is 1. So C6H6 is component 1 and the solute is component 2. Now, the vapor pressure of pure benzene, that is P1. Pure is P1 naught. So the vapor pressure of pure benzene at a certain temperature is 0 0.850 bar. Right? A non-volatile, non-electrolyte solid, that is the solute, weighing 0 0.5 grams, it means W2 is equal to 0 0.5 grams, is given to us, right? When added to 39 grams of benzene, so W1 is equal to 39 grams. The mass of benzene is 39 grams and the molar mass, which makes it M1, is equal to 78 grams per mole, right? This is also given to us 78 grams per mole. Vapor pressure of the solution then is 0 0.845 bar. Vapor pressure of the solution, that is P1, becomes equal to, because it's a non-volatile solute, Therefore, the vapor pressure of the solution actually has only the vapors of the solvent. So, vapor pressure of the solution is 0 
8.45 bar. And you have to calculate the molar mass of the solid substance. That is M2 is to be calculated. Right? Now, let us come to this. P1 naught, the equation P1 naught minus P1 upon P1 naught is equal to N2 upon N1. But we are supposed to calculate M2 from this. So, we will get is equal to W2 upon M2 into M1 upon W1. Right? And now, how would you calculate? What is P1 naught? P1 naught is given to us is 0 0.850 bar minus what is uh, the pressure of P1? P1 is 0 0.845 bar upon what is P1 naught again? 0 0.850 bar is equal to what is W2? W2 given to us is 0. 5 grams upon M2 molar mass is to be calculated into M1 is 78 uh oh 78 grams per mole divided by W1 given to us is 39 grams right now the gram and gram will get cancelled and you'll get bar this would be equal to 0 0.005 bar upon 0 0.850 bar so bar and bar will get cancelled is equal to 0 0.5 upon m2 into 78 grams per mole upon 39 cancelling out the units so from this you can calculate M2. What would M2 be equal to? M2, bring it up here. M2 goes up here and this comes down here. I mean these, uh, you cross multiply on the other side. You get 0 0.5 into 78 gram per mole upon 0 0.005 and this goes up into 0 0.850 into in the denominator 39 and when you solve all of this you will what are the units that you will get you will get the answer in grams per mole and that is what you should get the molarity should be in grams per mole oh sorry the molar mass of the uh, of the solute should be in grams per mole and when you calculate this the molar mass comes out to be 170 grams per mole 170 grams per mole right so it was a simple problem. All you had, uh, you were given P1 naught, you were given W1, you were given M1, you were given W2, P1 and M2 was to be uh, calculated. It was a simple substitution and calculate M2 for it. With this, I'll finish this video. In the next video, I'll solve a couple of problems based on this colligated property that is relative lowering of vapor pressure. And then we we'll proceed to the uh, other colligated properties. So if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.